Egypt's transition into gynocentrism via music. The purpose of this presentation is to demonstrate the transition that Arabic music had gone through in modern times, using clear examples from extremely popular Arabic artists. The transition that will be specified will be in relation to male-centered cultural influence morphing into female-centered influence. I will also add in my opinion as to why this transition towards gynocentrism had and continues to occur. In the early 1900s to mid 1900s, there existed two very prominent Arabic singers that played a great role in the lives of Arabs and Africans. The two Egyptian singers are Abdul Halim Al Hafiz and Umm Kalthum. Previous discussions regarding the practice of androphilic elements in society were fairly limited. I would like to address something very interesting in this video that nobody talks about at all, not even in the Arabic community. Although these two singers had their pinnacle of glory and fame back in the 1900s, their music is still going on strong and is played around the world even today. Don't believe me? Not long ago, Beyonce actually came out on stage with other females and danced to music that was originally composed for Umm Kalthum. It was as if the complete destruction of male importance in the page of male-centered society was being celebrated by Beyonce Knowles. If the original Arabic words in this song were translated to English, a different picture would have been painted. Beyonce's feature, including the lyrics that she sings, have nothing to do with the original composition at all. Here is Beyonce dancing to the music originally composed for Umm Kalthum. The link for this Beyonce video is provided in the description bar. If we listen to Abdul Halim or Umm Kalthum's music and listen to the words, it would be as if we are going back in time, going back to a completely different world and society. To one surprise, Egypt may actually appear more modern, more sophisticated and grounded as compared to the type of society that it has become today. It would be fascinating to also know if the quality of life was better back then than what it has become today. What you will find in the songs of these two artists are words that have masculine traits. Believe it or not, even the words or sentences that are pointing at a loved one are all masculine. For example, is translated to your love drives me crazy or something to that effect but the key word here is inta the word inta today means you with very strong masculine traits in many songs both abdul halim and umm kalthum would use the word inta today if you heard a male singer use this word in a brand new modern song you would possibly assume that he would be homosexual but that would not be the case in an androphilic society. Today's gynocentric Arabic music uses the word inti rather than inta. Inti is most definitely feminine, from what Arabic music was to what it has become today has been a monumental change. Another word that Abdul Halim also used, which has masculine traits, is the word habibi, which can be translated to my loved one, with masculine tendencies. And yes, again, this word was directed at females back then. Today, you will hear the word Habibti rather than the word Habibi in nearly every Arabic song sung by males when directed at females. It's the T at the end of the word that changes everything to cause it to become feminine in Arabic grammar. And for those that may need some visual evidence that Abdul Halim Al Hafiz was using Arabic words with masculine traits for expression of emotions, here is an audio visual example from one of his popular songs called Gan Al Hawa. You will notice that he is speaking directly to a female using words with masculine connotations. <laughs> Yeah, boy, yeah, boy. 
I would like to take the chance right now due to the visual content of this specific video clip of Abdul Halim to note that although the Arab Middle Eastern world is portrayed as a female bashing, female oppressing society, this is not always the case as can be clearly seen in this video that was just played. Females happily expressing their sexuality to the point where they may have actually fought off any potential feminists that would shout out patriarchy. There are many other cases in many of these songs where even the word moon is used to define one's lover. In English, the moon is usually masculine and the sun is usually feminine. However, when Abdul Halim sings the words Ya Amar Ya Nasini, meaning O oh Moon, O oh, the one who forgot me, he is most definitely referring to a female. Now, why did the state have a preference towards male-centered society at the time? During the time frame of the recording of the music sung by Abdul Halim Al Hafiz and Umm Kalthum, and the time frame when this music was sung and performed by these artists and other Arabian artists, one will notice that Egypt and other surrounding countries were going through a phase and era of war. At the very least, Egypt was on the brink of war and stayed on its toes, prepared for war against Israel and its allies. Egypt and Israel clashed many times, including in the years 1948, 1954, 1955, 56, 67 and so forth. Using music to give males a feeling of importance and playing on male protector provider strings becomes very clear when one juxtaposes the actual historical events that Egypt had gone through and compares them to Egypt's musical culture and the male-centered style of society that it had gone through at the time. Egypt would use music to rally up its male troops. Today, however, Egypt's musical culture is most definitely not male-centric. It has become completely female-centric. It is no longer on its toes and on the defensive and has its own internal domestic problems. Although music is an extremely powerful tool that can be used to mold and shape societies, I also think that music can be a reflection of a society. Music can expose whether a society is male-centric or female-centric, especially when one compares past musical lyrics to current lyrics.